Welcome to The Erica Russo Show, where we dive deep into the realms of personal development, spirituality, and the power of the mind. Join us on a transformative journey as we explore the art of manifesting the life you truly desire, all while listening to your intuition. Join host Erica Russo, intuitive life and business mentor and best-selling author each week as we'll embark on a quest to uncover the secrets of manifesting abundance, nurturing a resilient mindset, and tapping into the spiritual dimensions that shape our reality. Each episode, we'll bring you insightful discussions, practical techniques, and inspiring stories from experts and seekers alike. Whether you're seeking clarity in your spiritual journey, striving to shift your mindset, or eager to unlock your full potential, this podcast is your guiding light. What is up, guys? Welcome to the Erica Russo Show. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. I am so excited that the universe led you here today. I am pretty sure that it's probably due to the topic of today's conversation, uh, seasonal affective disorder, the thing that we all know and absolutely loathe. (laughs) So yeah, thanks for being here. If you are an OG and you continue to come back, you continue to press play, what's up guys? Thanks for coming. Thanks for listening. Thank you for your continued support. Be sure to come and hang out with me on Instagram. My handle is at Erica W. Russo. Very short and sweet and to the point. So with that being said, let's dive into today's topic. So seasonal affective disorder, also known as the winter blues. This particular disorder is essentially a, a It's because of the changing of the seasons, right? It's when we go from summer to fall and fall to winter, when the sun, we don't see the sun often. (laughs) And it's essentially due to the lack of grounding, due to the lack of vitamin D, due to the lack of connection to Mother Earth, okay? And As much as I fucking hate the fact that I have struggled with seasonal affective disorder for nearly my whole life, um, I love the fact that it is a really great way to show us and mix science with spirituality and see the importance of grounding. I've said it time and time again that so many of us who struggle with mental health, with overeating or not overeating, but overthinking, um, ruminating thoughts, anxiety, depression, a lot of it has to do with our lack of connection to the earth's field. So, you know, something that I do when I work with a client and, you know, they're coming in feeling a certain type of way, I've kind of set up this protocol and I've taught my mentees this where you have to ask these three questions, right? If someone's coming in and they're feeling detached or just not feeling themselves, feeling low on energy, you know, um, just all of that kind of shit. Are you grounded? Are you protected? And have you cleared your energy? So much of what we experience is not ours, believe it or not. We are all empathic to a degree and energy is contagious, very, very contagious. And we don't even know, right? Because it's the unseen world. We don't understand it. We don't understand the fact that if we are near toxic people, negative Nancys, um, all of that kind of stuff, we don't know how that energy is rubbing off on us, right? So that's why it is so important to keep your circle small. It is so important to try to stay in a high vibrational place, to create boundaries with people like that, because it's really kind of like fucking COVID if you think about it, or the common cold or whatever you want. It's contagious, right? Negativity is contagious. So 
when we find ourselves feeling a certain way, thinking a certain way, finding ourselves in that negative loop or negative spiral, it's important for us to ask those three questions. Am I grounded? No, I'm not really grounded. Okay, so go ahead and ground. Have I been protecting my energy? Am I calling in Archangel Michael? Am I creating that golden bubble before I leave the house or go into public? Uh, No, not really. Well, then, you know, it's kind of like walking around naked. You are fully exposed to all of the energies around you, right? Um, And then have I cleared my energy? Have you taken a sea salt bath? Have you shamanic shaked? Have you done a chakra balancing meditation? And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I've seen it for so many years. People see a dramatic difference once you work through these steps, okay? Again, I am not a mental health professional by any means, but I am an energy expert and I have seen this work time and time again. So the first thing is first, I always say, like, ask yourself those three questions. Am I grounded? Have you been spending time outside? Are you connected to the earth's energetic field? Most of the time it's no. Okay, so you know, invest in a, you know, especially in the middle of winter, investing in a grounding mat is great or investing in uh, grounding sheets for your bed. So you're grounding while you're sleeping. How incredible is that? There's many, many ways that we can ground. If you don't have, you know, that sort of income to invest in these sort of things, go grab a fucking rock. (laughs) Go grab a rock outside. I'm not even joking. And just hold on to it. Put it on your desk. Put it in your purse. Hold on to it when you're meditating. That is filled with the energy of earth right there. Um... And again, with the protection thing, I cannot begin to tell you how many times it still fucking happens. And here's here's the thing. I ground and protect every single day. And I have found when I spend a decent amount of time with particular people, essentially, you know, people that maybe have a money wound or they're just so fucking pessimistic, or they think a certain way, even with the protection that I have, if I spend enough time with them, I will find myself, you know, a couple days after the event, feeling these thoughts or thinking these thoughts that not that don't feel like mine. And I have to go back and I have to say, oh, it's probably because of this. Maybe there was a strand, you know, maybe there was some crumbs, some energetic crumbs that kind of found themselves in my energetic field. And then I do the process and I feel better. So we're supposed to be talking about seasonal affective disorder, right? And I just went off on a tangent. But anyway, like I said, um, (laughs) Welcome to the Eric Caruso show. This is how we do it here. Um, So where was I? Okay, so grounding. So again, I love when spirituality and science can intermingle. And again, seasonal affective disorder is essentially a lack of connection to Mother Earth or the changing of seasons, they say. Um, And it sucks. I'm feeling it right now. Um, it's, I just fucking hate it. It's just so irritating. It really is. But here are some five, here are some five things that you can do to help with this. If you are someone who struggles with it, or if you're experiencing it, maybe you haven't been diagnosed with it. Maybe it's just the winter blues, but I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Nobody is feeling like they are sitting in a beautiful tropical island with the sun beating down on them, living their best life in the middle of January, like unless you're on vacation. Everybody's feeling it. Everybody isn't in a in their best state. So maybe incorporating these things that I'm about to share with you can help with that. So with that being said, number one, ground, ground, ground. I know that I live in the Northeast. I live in Connecticut. It is 26 degrees today. I'm not going outside. (laughs) I'm not going outside. But what I will be doing is I am setting up my grounding mats that I have found on Amazon. Um, The in the places in my home that I I spend the most time in, right? So I just sit my ass on it. 
<laughs> and I'm grounding. And believe it or not, it really does make a big difference. Um, like I stated before, there are grounding sheets that you can purchase again on Amazon. I don't have them yet, um, but it's definitely something that I will be investing in shortly. That's a couple of things. If you have time, and this makes me look like a lunatic, I am well aware of that, but when I do go outside, like when I'm starting my car in the morning, when I'm running to get the mail out of the mailbox, I don't put shoes on. People think I'm nuts. My mother goes absolutely batshit with this, but I don't care, (laughs) to be completely honest, because I know every time I put my bare foot on earth, I am absorbing the negative ions that I need. So simple things like that. Yes, it's absolutely cold and it doesn't feel good, but it is what it is. So with that being said, that's the first thing that you can do when you're struggling with seasonal affective disorder. Number two is red light therapy or any sort of light therapy. Tanning is beneficial as well. Um, but I I love red light therapy. Um, it makes a huge difference. It really, really does. Uh, this is something that I've actually started this year because um, I never really had a red light bed available until now my my gym just got one so investing in that after every workout has helped me tremendously i i almost feel i would even say like i feel an immediate boost after i have a session uh so that's something that you can do another thing that helps is shifting gears what do i mean by that so if you have a scheduled routine If you do this on Monday, do this on Tuesday, do this on Wednesday, blah, 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 blah. You work these hours, you do this. Shifting what you're doing, okay? Essentially what you're doing is you're giving your mind a break. You're shifting gears. You're kind of snapping it out of itself. So today, for example, I was going to create a lot of content and um, work right? But I woke up this morning and I I did not feel like it. I was like, I don't want to fucking do this at all. I really don't want to do this. So basically what I'm doing is I'm recording this. I'm taking a client call in a, in an hour. And then after that, I'm going in and getting my, my pedicure. I'm getting a pedicure. I'm maybe going to go walk around the mall. I'm shifting gears. I'm getting myself out of the situation that is stagnant. Okay. Things like this, you don't realize make such a huge difference. Number four, movement, move your body. This is, this is a big one. This is definitely a big one. I'm going to, you know, since we're like basically in confessional right now, because I tell you guys all my dirty little secrets, um, I, so everybody knows that I have been on my weight loss and wellness journey for quite some time right now, quite some time, but I fell off the fucking wagon, man. Like the, I fell off the wagon. There was so many cookies in this house. It was absolutely insane. So essentially from like the 23rd to the 31st, I was just ingesting insane amounts of carbs. I was ingesting insane amounts of carbs. It was really, really bad. And I felt like absolute shit. I felt like shit. And I think that this is like common for everybody with all the goddamn baking that we do on, you know, during the holiday season, we are ingesting so many more carbs than usual. And I felt it like, trust me, I felt it. And it was through that week or week and a half, the kids were home, you know, and as you know, you guys know that my husband works basically seven days a week. He has uh, five successful sandwich shops in the New York and Connecticut area. He also has a food truck. He's also in the process of doing a lot of other things as far as businesses are concerned. So when it comes down to it, when the kids are home, I'm home and I couldn't go to the gym. Like I, I really couldn't go to the gym and 
even when I had the opportunity to go to the gym, I was telling myself stories of like, no, I'm just going to start after January 1st, right? And I'll just start after January 1st. And that wasn't the best decision on my part because I know for a fact it really did not help my seasonal affective disorder by any means. So movement is so important. If you are not a gym person, if you're not a gym person, that's fine. Just dance. Head on over to my January playlist that I make on Spotify. Put some candles on and just fucking vibe out, man. Just dance. Don't worry about people looking at you or anything like that. Just let your body move. Just movement really is medicine. So that's number four. And the last thing that I want to share is a little bit on the woo side, but it's some crystals and essential oils that can help when it comes to the winter blues. And the crystals that I like are essentially clear crystals are high vibrational, right? So what is essentially happening is we have lower vibrations within our energetic field this time. So we want to be able to raise them just a little bit. So clear quartz, selenite is great because it also transmutes negative energy and turns it into positive energy. Uh, What else? Apotholite, um, really anything that's like lighter colored, clear is, is the thing that you want but also also for some reason I don't know why and I don't even know um I don't I should have gotten my crystal bible hold on okay we're back I saw my crystal bible like literally a couple feet away so I was like oh let me go grab it so I've been very drawn like through this process while I have been in my seasonal affective disorder I've been really drawn to calcite I don't really know what calcite is good for, but now that I have my crystal Bible handy, we're going to talk about it because a lot of the times when you're drawn to a particular crystal, a particular smell, there's something within the attributes that your soul, your body needs at that time. So calcite is a powerful amplifier and cleanser of energy. Simply having calcite in the room cleans negative energy from the environment and heightens your energy. Well, there you go. Holy shit. Wow. There you go. Thank you, intuition. Within the body, it removes stagnant energy. The spectrum of colors cleans the physical and subtle bodies. Calcite is an active crystal, speeding up development and growth. This is a spiritual stone linked to the higher consciousness that facilitates the opening of higher awareness and psychic abilities. It accelerates spiritual development and allows the soul to remember experiences when it returns to the body. Psychologically, calcite connects the emotions with the intellect, creating emotional intelligence. Calcite has a positive effect, especially where someone has lost hope or motivation. It combats laziness, (laughs) aiding and becoming more energetic on all levels. Mentally, calcite calms the mind, teaches discernment and analysis, stimulates insight and boosts memory. It facilitates knowing which information is important and then retaining it. Calcite confers the ability to change ideas into action. It is useful stone for studying. Calcite alleviates emotional stress and replaces it with serenity. It is a stabilizing stone, enhancing trust in oneself and strengthening the ability to overcome setbacks. On a subtle level, a layout of the appropriate colors of calcite cleanses, balances, and energizes the chakras. Well, there you go. I love when this happens. I love when this happens. So trust your intuition. And when you're being guided to a particular stone, hold on to it because I'm telling you it's something that you need. So with that being said, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thank you guys for tuning in. I love each and every one of you. So much power and healing. If you are somebody who is also struggling with seasonal affective disorder, know that, you know, the groundhog is coming soon, right? And 
the sun always comes up again and spring always comes and I am counting down the days to that. I love you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and I will see you around the internet. Thank you.